I'm not comfortable talking usually around other artists because I don't have a background in art. I don't have all the wonderful things to say. Uh, all of the, like, I wish I were Edie. So I could just start <laughs> saying all these and dropping these things. I don't know these things. And usually that makes me embarrassed so I don't talk. But at 55, um, I decided for my birthday I wanted to be a stone carver. So I went to school at Aramont over in Gatlinburg. And there was this incredible uh, teacher there. And he taught me how to stone carve. And ever since then, I have been doing stone carving. I do it because it gives me joy. That other people like it is just a plus. I don't really, um, I don't have a gallery. I don't do anything. I, people come to my house and seek things, and uh, they buy them or not. I don't care. <laughs> um, I, I just love it, and I would rather do, instead of me talking, because I said I was going to talk, because I'm not comfortable doing it. If you ask me questions, I become brilliant. <laughs> so, if you, if you want to ask me any questions about what I do, um, I will tell you this, one of the reasons I love it is that unlike a lot of other artistic endeavors, people are cleaner. When I stone car, I am a mess from head to toe. I, uh, I get up in the morning, put on my icky clothes, go out and put on hats, put on masks, and still get covered from head to toe in stone dust. And I, I love it. I, I, just, I just love it. I mean, Julia was saying how she kind of starts in a moment with no preconceived ideas. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you kind of have some thoughts or plan out, or do you just start working super? I started uh, just doing it for me, and I decided I needed a series. So I thought of, uh, plus I have been a stone collector my entire life. I, I've even once stole a stone, <laughs> but that's another story. Uh, I, and I was formerly uh, married, and we traveled a lot, so I would bring up these stones back from all over the world. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do something with all these wonderful stones, but I have to have some kind of a, a, a running theme here. So I sat down and decided I would write down all the names of everything I could think of that had rock or stone or pebble in the title. And I came up with, oh, like 30 or 40 wonderful things. And then I had to get my mind to take those things and make a piece of sculpture that you would look at and really like as a, people, as a piece of sculpture, and then you'd read the name and you'd go, what's the name of that? <laughs> I had one named Rocks of Ages. She hit rock bottom. Uh, <laughs> Roxanne. Uh, and rock Modernoff. Uh, I just went crazy with it. And people loved that humor, loved the intellectual humor with it. So those, uh, that was fun. And then I did a series of busts, two of which are here. Um, the darker one is uh, African Wonderstone. So she's named Wonder Woman. And this is what's called the Matriarch. What kind of stone is the mine? Which granny? Oh, no. Uh, granite, uh, this is limestone. Limestone. Indiana limestone. I, Indiana limestone. Yeah. Um, and someone taught me this. So a long time ago, millenniums ago, when the earth was taken shape, once upon a time, uh, this was all an ocean here in Tennessee. And so all the limestone here has a lot of fossils, inclusions, clay, yuck. And if you go up to the shore, you get up around Indiana where there was sand. <laughs> so when it was all created, uh, Indiana has a very pure limestone. Very seldom do you come across a piece of uh, fossil. And if you do, uh, you can usually deal with it. It's very small. But Tennessee limestone is very difficult to carve. It, it, if you want something definite, it's very difficult to carve. It is for me anyway. So um, 